If you're wondering what an electric bike is and whether it could be for you, we're here to help. Like any new technology, electric bikes can be daunting if you're not sure exactly how they work and how they can help you get around. So in this video, we'll tell you all you need to know about electric bikes, about how they work and how they can help you ride that bit more easily, whether that's a trip to the shops, a ride to work or just for good old fashioned fun. But before I go any further, why not subscribe to the channel if you haven't already so you never miss a video from us. And finally, a big thanks to our sponsors Trek for making this video possible. An electric bike or e-bike is just like a normal bike, just that it's got a motor built in. Simple, really. But alongside the motor, there's also a battery to power it and all the electronics to control the motor's output. The motor will cut in when you're pedaling under a certain cutoff speed. We'll explain a little bit more about that later and then cut out when you stop pedaling. You can also select the level of assistance you need, less on the flat or more to help you get up that pesky hill. There are loads of different types of electric bikes. In fact, think of a bike type and someone will have put a motor in there. The classic hybrid or urban electric bike is great to give you help around town. It'll have an upright ride position, straight handlebars and one or more gears. You'll often get a luggage rack, mud guards and sometimes lights built in too. So you're good to go in all weather and at all times of day. Another great option for urban riders is a folding electric bike. These usually have small wheels and you can fold them up to take them on public transport. You can zip through town thanks to extra electric assistance and then fold them up and pop them under your desk when you get to work. Electric mountain bikes are really popular because most mountain bike riders prefer riding downhill to hauling themselves back up to the top. The motor makes that a lot easier and gives the extra power needed to get up those steep climbs with ease. There are quite a few electric road bikes with dropped handlebars out there too. These are some of the lightest electric bikes so you can go fast on the flat but you'll also have some extra power on tap whether that's to help you climb the hills or keep going into a fierce headwind. Of course, there's even gravel bikes with dropped bars and wider, grippier tires that also come with a motor too. Plus, there are other electric bikes you can buy for things like carrying cargo or extra passengers. An electric bike's motor only helps you out when you're pedaling and provides an extra push to help you get along. The bike senses when you move the pedals and how much effort you're putting in to pedaling and then it adds an extra amount of work proportionate to that so you're not going to get carried away by your e-bike. But you're still going to have to do some work yourself to keep moving. There's a controller that lets you decide how much assistance you need. You usually get three or more assistance levels that lets you select how much work you need to do and how much the motor helps. The motor is often in the middle of the bike between the pedals. This is done to ensure that it doesn't affect the handling. You can also find e-bikes with a motor in the rear wheel hub, while folding electric bikes in particular sometimes have a hub motor in the front wheel. The battery to power the motor can be in several different places. Often it will be inside the bike's down tube or attached to the top of it, and some e-bikes have it underneath the luggage rack at the rear of the bike or attached to the handlebars. It's usually wired in neatly, so there are no external cables or very few of them. Sometimes you can remove the battery, which is really handy for charging. Other batteries are built into the bike, so you need to make sure you've got a power socket somewhere close by when you need to recharge them. Some electric bikes let you fit an extra range extender battery, which usually sits in the bike's bottle cage, plugs into the main battery and can give you up to 50% extra range. Yes, electric bikes are completely legal. You can ride an electric bike anywhere you can ride a normal bike on the road, on bike lanes and on bridleways. You don't need a driving license to ride an e-bike and the e-bike doesn't have to be licensed either. You don't need to wear a helmet, although we strongly advise you use one, particularly since you'll be riding that bit faster than on a normal bike. It's also worth thinking about taking out insurance too, to protect yourself from personal accident and third party liability. In the UK, Europe and Australia, the motor can only help you up to 25 kilometers an hour. That's around 15 miles per hour. After that, it must cut out. You can still ride faster. It's just that your legs are going to be doing the work, not the motor. In the US, usually your motor can assist you up to 20 miles per hour before it has to cut out. The law varies state to state, but often you can use a higher powered electric bike that's speed limited at 28 miles per hour, though there may be restrictions on where you can ride it. 
You have to pedal both types of bike, but in some states you may also be able to use a throttle controlled bike that uses a twist grip on the handlebars that you don't have to pedal to get along. In the UK and Europe, you can buy a more powerful e-bike that goes up to 45 kilometers per hour, but this technically counts as a moped, so you have to tax and license it, have insurance and a number plate and wear a motorcycle helmet to ride it. How much range you'll get depends on a few things. Firstly, it's the size of the battery. That's usually measured in watt hours and can vary from around 250 watt hours to 700 watt hours or more. Plus, as we've already said, you can get a range extender battery to increase the battery capacity even more. Next is how much the e-bike draws from the battery. A heavy electric bike with a powerful motor, like many electric mountain bikes, will drain the battery a lot more quickly than a less powerful dropped bar road electric bike. Then your range will depend on where you live and where you ride. It takes a lot more power to ride up hills than on the flat, and if you live somewhere windy, then that will take more power too and range also decreases if it's cold. Finally, how far you can go depends on how fit you are. If you're putting in a lot of the work, the motor won't have to work so hard and voila, you've got extra range. You might have noticed that I haven't actually answered the question. As you might expect with all of those caveats, I can only speak in broad terms. Though typically folding and urban electric bikes have the shortest range and might take you 20 miles or so, while at the other extreme, a road e-bike with a range extender fitted might go over 100 miles on a single charge. As you'll know if you've ever looked at electric cars, lithium ion batteries are expensive. And although the battery in an e-bike is nowhere near as large as a car battery, electric bike batteries are still pricey. Plus, you've got the motor and all the circuits, the sensors, the display unit to control its output, and everything needs to be weatherproof as well. All of that is on top of the basic cost of the bike, the frame, the parts, which all have to be beefed up to handle the extra power and speed. So there's a lot that goes into an electric bike, which explains that price tag. We've seen some people in the comments section saying that using an e-bike is cheating, but is it really? If you ride it in a race against non-e-bike riders, then yes. But let's face it, most electric bike riders aren't competing, they're just out to enjoy the ride. You might want to be able to keep up with fitter friends or just need some extra help on the hills. And that's not cheating, it's just common sense. And you can't cheat at having fun. The short answer is yes. The electric bike motor will never cut out completely, so you're always going to have to pedal to keep moving. That's going to get your heart rate up, and that's what gets you fitter. Boffins in Utah tracked riders on electric bikes and reckoned that they hit 94% of the average heart rate compared to a non-electric bike when riding the same loop. They rode faster and they didn't feel as though they'd worked as hard either, so that's a win-win. Electric bikes are also a great option for active commuting. You're bound to get fitter riding to work than sitting on public transport or in your car. And if you're out for a leisure ride, you're likely to stay out longer, which will up your fitness gains. An electric bike is a great option if you've got health concerns too, as it does lessen the peak workload. So get out there, start slowly, plan a route that's not too difficult and dial down your assistance level and you'll soon feel the benefits of riding an electric bike. And don't forget to take a break every now and then to relax and recover too. So that's everything that you need to know about electric bikes. But if you do still have any questions, then do leave them in the comments below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you want to see even more about e-bikes, then why not watch this video?